Hi, thanks for joining me today and welcome back for the second episode in this series about how to use DiletFlex. After ingesting content into DiletFlex using FlexMove, we're now going to enrich the content with metadata, which makes it easier to organize, find, and with automation distribute content to various stock video websites, and more generally, any platform. In the first episode, we entered some metadata on the upload form in FlexMove. This metadata stays with the asset after ingest, as you can see here. We didn't fill in everything on the upload form because we can enter this information later, but some essential fields are configured as mandatory fields and must be filled in. After content is ingested, more metadata fields can become available, such as metadata related to post-production work, relationships between assets, and many other data types. So how do we add more metadata to an asset? There's multiple methods to get metadata into the system. As we saw in the first episode, we can manually enter it in the FlexMove module. Alternatively, we can just open the asset record and adjust the metadata as needed within the FlexMAM user interface. Now, adding metadata is time consuming. So DelitFlex can import metadata from third-party systems with XML or JSON files, or even via API, creating new metadata-enriched asset placeholders, or just enriching the existing content in the system. Sharing metadata with third-party systems, such as resource planning, CRM, billing, work order, or scheduling systems, helps streamline multi-system workflows and updates content with status updates at various steps in the lifecycle of an asset. Automated metadata generation can also help enrich assets, such as automated extraction of technical metadata from media assets by Dell at Flex. This technical metadata includes detection of the original format, the resolution of the video, and the amount of audio tracks, just to name a few. Media content can also be scanned by artificial intelligence services using Dillette Media Cortex, which, after scanning the content, can automatically produce metadata, including a transcript of what is said in a video, detection of recognized faces such as politicians and celebrities, detection of known objects, and much more. If we're working with a team of people, DeletFlex can assign a user task to review metadata on an asset. Once the user accepts this task, the user can correct the existing metadata if needed or add new metadata to the asset while previewing the content. DeletFlex administrators use the DeletFlex metadata designer tool to design and configure as many metadata definitions as needed for assets and workflows, such as specific metadata definitions for movies, seasons, and episodes, as well as sports content, corporate videos, and much more. By dragging and dropping fields into the metadata designer canvas, DeletFlex administrators can easily add many different data types to a definition with various visual configurations. Certain metadata fields in these definitions can actually help enforce controlled vocabulary for metadata entry with drop-down menus, checkboxes, tags, glossaries, and taxonomies on top of date fields, free text fields, and other innovative ways of entering metadata. Once the definition is set, an administrator simply assigns the definition to an asset type, to a workflow, or to a user interface element. Submetadata can be for information purposes only and not added for search, while other fields are added to the index for searching as well as being made available for users to update if required. At Dillette, we love metadata, as it's key to making content available for future users to search and find. With thousands, if not millions of assets within the Dillette Flex system, searching for content without metadata is like finding a needle in a haystack. Now, taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture of a media workflow, not only is metadata needed for search, but it also contributes to automating workflows using rules set to make decisions based on metadata values. For example, if content becomes embargoed due to rights restrictions, then the system can just automatically remove the content from any public-facing portals. In our next episode, we're going to learn another method of adding metadata using timed markers. That's specifying what's happening on a video based on timecode. Thanks for joining us. Until the next episode.